Oh, one second, one second. Mine's still outside. Let me, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get off the elevator mentally right now. All right, I'm here. Let's go. Let's go. First question. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all better come on, man. Sweetheart, there you go, man. Go ahead. I, I don't have the mic. Go ahead, Ariel. I hear you. Yeah, I'll just go over here. Well, first of all, so just any position groups or any side of the ball kind of giving you pause when you go up against a different opponent that's not. What is what is pause? Define pause for me. Um, you know, I don't I don't want to say that's going to make you kind of nervous. It just kind of gives you pause, like kind of makes you um, have some kind of uh, you know second guess. I, I never feel pressure. We apply pressure. Um, I would like to feel real good, and I feel good about protecting too. You protect two, give them a clean pocket, it's gonna be some problems. Hi coach, Adam Mr. Tiger, 24 seven sports. How you doing, sir? Curious as you've prepared for TCU, what your overall impressions are? Of the First of all, a great coach. Great coach and uh, great staff. They did uh, unthinkable last year and I'm proud of them. You know, residing uh, there in Texas for, for quite some time. <coughs> They lost a lot of, of, of men that were really good football players. And they replaced them with, with pretty good football players. One thing about that team and uh, their head coach, they will be prepared. They will be fundamentally sound. Um, they will come out emotional, play with emotions, trying to you know, tone for last season the way that ended. But man, this team is uh, it's a good football team. I'm, I'm happy with uh, our opponent. I can't wait to get him in and, and see how we stand up to the challenge. Hey, Coach, Jake Schwanis, DMVR. I uh, just had a question about Tyler Brown, who was recently ruled ineligible. Yeah, that, that hurt. That hurt tremendously. He's a kid that I'm, is dear to me, um, like a darn son to me. And I, this is one of those moments when my, one side of me is saying, shut up, Coach. The other one said, go get it. I'm going to go get it. Tyler Brown is a wonderful kid, but he, deal, he deals with a lot of issues inside. And he's seeing specialists and seeing people to really deal with these issues and calm these things down. So I'm very privy to him. He was in my Thursday group that I spoke to the last every Thursday group of young men that were there at Jackson with me last year. But that, it, it don't make sense. It, it, some things just don't make sense. You know, you, you say you really care about mental health, but when you have someone really dealing with mental health, um, there's a problem. And then ostracizing him and not allowing him to do what he's blessed and gifted to do and the thing that presents him peace, that's, that's trying for a young man. He's not the only one, it's a, a plethora of people around the country. Um, I think this was the year that they said no to darn near everybody. But, but Tyler Brown, uh, I wish they could review that and, and really understand that. I wish you could see, I think he made a video that, that was sent to um, the NCAA. I want you guys to get that video. Please do that for me. And, and, and watch it, then tell me how you can say no to this kid. He posted it on his YouTube coach. He did? Yeah. Okay, did you also tell me you see it? Yeah, we showed it. Okay. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, wow. Do you really care or are you just saying you care? Are you caring when it's convenient? No when it's profitable. Coach, Jimmy Sirfoss, uh, 247 Sports. It's gonna be hot down in Texas. Is that something y'all are preparing for? It's, it's hot, it's kinda hot in here too, man. A little bit, so, heat is heat, man. I think uh, <coughs> a lot of kids dealing with the altitude here is, is been tremendous as well. So I, I think we're gonna be okay. I don't think we're gonna be okay, we're gonna be okay. We're putting them in pressure probably situations. We've stopped practice uh, midway through on a couple of occasions and, and had them run several sprints, then continue practice to, to make sure they understand the fatigue level and don't give in to it mentally. Once you give in to anything in life mentally, you, you, you don't fail. Hey, Coach Carlos Bryant, DFM. The other day you said that your patience is wearing very thin for foolishness. Right. And I'm just wanting to wonder, 
what is the tone is remarkable because you worry about if your players are going to be too tight or too loose heading into the season? Um, I don't know what too tight or too loose means really, but foolishness means the jumping outside, the stupid stuff, just the stuff, self-inflicted type of wounds that, that teams deal with. Practice-wise, man, these guys have been getting after it. I'm proud of them. They've been working their butts off, and they've kind of challenged one another to do so as, as, as such. Our morning message this morning really wasn't me talking at them. It was them telling me what they need to do to be dominant in this game. And everything they said, we wrote on the board, and we said, okay, now go out there and practice and do it. Don't wait until Saturday, Saturday to do it. Do it now. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with our young men. I really am. Hey, Coach, Tyler King with the Denver Gazette. I just want to ask about Alton McCaskill. Obviously, we've seen him in a non-contact jersey for much of fall camp. Do you feel like he's going to be good to go for this Saturday? Well, he, he tried to fight me the other day to get that jersey off of him, man. He wants that jersey off of him, but he just started hitting it like Alton can hit it. Like, he just started moving and, and, and cutting and, 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 and the body lean, and you can see you can see a tremendous difference in week to week. Um, I told them personally, we're in it for the long haul. We're not in it for the sprint. Although we like to win, 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 and we will win, win, win in due time. But we just want to make sure he's OK and not just throw him out there in the fire and he's not prepared. Because when he plays, we want him to be the guy that he was. Does it help that in that running room? Because I know Coach Flea had said earlier in the camp in camp that you guys want to use like two guys to kind of share the load that you have some experience with Kosier, uh, and you've got guys like Hank and Dylan Edwards too. That it helps to ease all them back in. Yeah, Savion as well. Man. Yeah, I mean all these guys. I think uh, I know Savion had a thousand last year. Dylan's a home run waiting to happen. Uh, shoot, we that running back room is. I, I I'm I'm sleeping real well with that room. I get a great night's nice sleep when it's concerning that room. That room is really talented, and Flea is doing a, a great job coaching and then leading that room. Todd Anderson, Fox 31. Coach, you've been part of the football play at the highest level. Yes, sir. Um, for a lot of these kids, this is going to be new. Uh, what is your impression in terms of the way they will respond Saturday when the ball's kicked off? Well, they came here because they wanted it. They came here because they wanted the light, they wanted the smoke, they wanted the attention, they wanted the focus, they wanted the love. I mean, but also you got to understand there's an the opposite of that as well that you got to be willing to accept when you want all and desire those things. Um, these kids are ready. We prepare them not just athletically, we prepare them mentally for things and challenges that's going to happen in life as well. So uh, I like what I see on a daily basis. I really do. And as a matter of fact, I love these kids. I really do. Yes, sir. Hey coach, Nick Rob Child, Denver 7. Uh, this is the second time you mentioned mental health at this press conference. Yes, I just kind of want to get your impression on how important it is for you to coach their mental in addition to their physical. Well, I'm not only coaching their mental, their physical, as well as their spiritual. And just trying to guide them to their financials as well. So it's a, uh, if you just coach football, you, you, you're missing it. If you just lead these kids down the football path, you, you're going to miss 98% of your locker room because it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. I mean, we tell these parents all the time, we, we, you send us a boy, we're going to send you back a man. And that has nothing to do with football. It has everything to do with the, the mental, the social, the spiritual, the economical, all these different facets of life. Educational as well. They just started school yesterday. We want them to be dominant in the classrooms as well. Go ahead, Matt. Coach. You spoke a little bit about kicking by committee, but it seems like maybe you guys had a kicking competition I don't know if I ever said there. we're going to kick by committee. I don't know if I ever said that. I said we have a plethora of kickers that can kick. Okay, so out. how has the kicking competition progressed? Um, it's really it's really good. I mean, we have three guys that field goal-wise, I think, could whatever way I feel, you know. <laughs> but you got to understand, this guy may be better on this hash. This guy may be better on that hash. This guy may be better this distance. This guy may be better with this pressure. You know, you gotta you gotta see that and feel that. Putting wise, that's no brainer. Um, uh, long snap wise, there's been battles that I think they're in every position, almost every position that we have. But these guys are really competing against one another. But I'm happy with the the specialists that we that we offer. I really am. Has anyone separated themselves? Yes. Sure.
So we talked about the uh, experience or the guys stepping out onto the field on Saturday, but this is going to be your first time as a coach for a Power 5 school in this yeah. big stage. What's going to be going through your mind when you're out there and you finally get to put this product on the field for these big Well, this, this ain't, I know it may seem like it, but it's not about me. And you're talking about a big stage. I think I played the Super Bowl and the World Series. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm straight. This is about the kids, man. I want them to uh, go out there and maximize the moment and take advantage of the exposure and the light that they have. And I feel like they will, 100%. Go ahead, Sean. Coach, you mentioned sleeping well. Do you sleep well when you look at the old line room? Yeah. What happens if two doesn't have a clean pocket to come this weekend? Um, I don't know if you've ever watched him play, but the kid makes really good decisions. That's one of the biggest assets that he has. He makes good decisions. He protects the ball. He dissects the defense and gets us in the play that we need to run. He changes that. Um, we have a tremendous offensive staff that's going to make sure they signal in the right thing for him so he won't have to make those adjustments. But if he has to, he will. But the kid makes plays. Um, I don't know if you watch practice, but we have some receivers that can really do it. We have some running backs that can really do it. We got an offense that I'm proud of. I'm proud of. I'm not shy by any means, and uh, I'm proud of what their their potential. You're proud of that line too. Yeah, yeah. I feel good about it. Go ahead, man. Coach Aaron Andrews on the Fox broadcast of Saints and Texans the other night mentioned yeah. that the players are going to be coming out in shades with an NIL deal. Can you maybe explain oh, a little no, bit no, about well, that? I, I can't go into that. I'm, I'm gonna stay away from the NIL stuff and all that. <laughs> Prayerfully that that happens. Hi, Coach Nikki Edwards, TV Sports Report. Last time we met, you mentioned that someone needs to step up and be with Travis in that corner position. Yeah. Who is there right now? Well, we have, we have a couple guys, uh, Cooper and Stoutmeyer. They're fighting to see who's going to be starting on that other side. It's, it's, it's going to go right down to, to, to the end. It may, it may go down to see who gets off the bus, the first one off the bus. Be, that's how tight it is right now. We're, we're, we're comfortable with both of their productions, but we just don't know which one they get to not. Sticking in the secondary, Coach Kelly mentioned the star position is a vital position for your team. Yes. I'm curious if you're willing to share who's been competing at that Slush, spot. Slusher should be that guy. Yeah, he's a, <coughs> he has experience. He's not shy by any means. He, he challenges receivers. He's, he's very physical on the run. He'll make a lot of mental mistakes. The kid can play, and he's been playing well uh, since he arrived. He really has. Hey, Coach, uh, Jack Carlo with uh, Buffalo's Wire. Um, just curious what you've seen from the defensive line so far uh, this camp. Defensive line, uh, I'm happy with what I see. I really am. We got some guys that I feel that they will end up in double digits in sacks. A couple of guys from the outside. The guys on the inside, Shane Coates, I feel like is a pro. Um, we have a, a, a distinct rotation in the inside that will keep him fresh. And I think we have one of the best coaches in, in college football and he's coaching period in Sal. And then uh, we just happen to have a Hall of Famer drop in just to deposit some nuggets in him uh, when, he, when he can treat me in a hot tub. He had a whole hot tub session with the D-Lime yesterday that was unbelievable as the legs just to see Warren Sal because his, his hip is bothering him. So he's getting treatment and everything. And some of the guys saw him in the hot tub, uh, so they wanted to join him and glean some of that that, that Hall of Fame gold. Hey, coach, uh, we see you shed the boot. Are you going to be able to run out? With Excuse the team? me. You shed the boot. Are you going to be able to uh, run out? With the team? Actually, great insight. Uh, the boot was actually hurting me today. It was compressing me today, and it hurt me. So I sent up for my shoe, and my shoe actually felt better than the boot. I hope that's God's way of telling me. All right, now abandon the boot. Because I only wear the boot to, on the practice field so I can move around uh, quickly. So hopefully I don't have to put it back on. I, I, I pray so. But that's the goal. That's the goal, to be able to leave, leave the young men out. That's the goal. Um, you mentioned Warren Sapp. Sapp was here a few days ago. What has it been like for some of these guys to have you know, several Hall of Famers, I guess, this uh, well? Well, I, I don't know, man. I don't talk to them about it. They, uh, they, uh, they're elated. I mean, I checked a couple of them because I'm old school. Like 
Mike Irvin and I was in the cafeteria and a couple of receivers walked by and I said, hold on, you know who this is? You don't walk by a Hall of Famer and you play the position of receiver, just walk by and don't even speak. Like, this, this, I don't know what this society, what this, this, this generation does, but we don't do that. Where I come from, we don't do that. There's no way that I would walk by some of those guys that uh, made it possible for me to command the salary that I commanded, and I'm gonna walk by like they're anonymous. So they, they stopped and gave him his love and respect. But the defense alignment, they have been ecstatic over um, Mr. Sapp just being here. They really have. Okay, last one, Ariel. Yeah, last one. I've got to check you, though. Because Thank you. Those Hall of Famers were all hurricanes, like myself. Yeah. And you're a knoll, my friend. No, 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 no. Actually, <laughs> do you know where I graduated from? Yeah. Who said that? I know everything. She didn't know that. They didn't know that. Tell them again. Where did I graduate? College. Your college. I graduated from HBCU. Well, so I'm a who? Well, because you're still an old. I'm a, no, I'm a who? <laughs> I thought it's where you graduated from, man. That, why you keep calling me that and then you know where I graduated from? I'm, I'm an HBCU grad. And you're okay with all those, with all those hurricanes? You got to understand, all of us grew up together. All of us played high school football together. All of us, we competed. Me and Playmaker competed against each other in college. And we always had love for one another. He was one, the reason I went to the Cowboys, because I called him and said, hey, man, tell me what's up down there in Texas. He says, all oh, good, bro, let's do this. And that's how the Florida boys. See, it's a Florida connection that we, um, it's, it's unbelievable. So the whole world had odds with Florida and Florida State. My best friend, Richard Frank, came here to speak to the whole team about uh, finances, financial literacy and all of that. So you, you missed that. He, uh, all, he went to the University of Florida. We played together in high school. He's the one nicknamed me prime time. So we've had more people than you reported on come to uh, just pour into the young men. But great insight. Tell the day. That's where I graduated from. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Appreciate coach. you all. Thanks, God bless you.